uh, you can buy these pre-made, but the prices are unbelievable in my opinion when you consider you you need about 20 you know 25 cents worth of uh, swivel, about 25 cents worth of hooks, and about a penny's worth of line uh, instead of buying one of these for six dollars and then losing it. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I'm going to show you how to tie up. A flounder rig or the more technical term would be a paternoster rig and uh, you know for those uh, aficionados out there I understand there's many different versions of paternoster rig and uh, so on and so forth I'm just going to show you how I tie it up okay there's lots of different you go on the internet there's all kinds of different ways to do it this is the way I've found to be the easiest quickest um, over time okay so what is a paternoster rig or the kind I use for flounder so it's a paternoster rig for flounder there's many different forms. Uh, and I'm going to use colored string to, to do the tying so you can see better. But let me just bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see what I'm showing you here. All right, so the basic idea is you've got a barrel swivel at the top, right? Barrel swivel. At the very bottom, you've got a snap swivel. This is what your weight's going to be attached to. And then in the middle, you've got two pieces of line coming off the main line, and each piece has a, a hook attached to it, okay? A special knot you use to tie that up. Now, you can buy these pre-made, but the prices are unbelievable, in my opinion, when you consider you're, you need about 20, you know, 25 cents worth of uh, swivel, about 25 cents worth of hooks, and about a penny's worth of line, uh, instead of buying one of these for $6 and then losing it because uh, it gets hooked on a rock very quickly. So um, just in terms of uh, the equipment you need for tying these, you need barrel swivels, you need snap swivels. I would get the cheapest ones you can find because you're going to lose these things on bottom, especially if you're fishing with kids and stuff like that. It's all going to disappear, so don't go expensive. Uh, for hooks, uh, this one here is about an inch and a half long, and the distance from the uh, tip to the shaft is maybe, uh, it's less than a centimeter, maybe three quarters of a centimeter. What would that be? Uh, eight millimeters, you know, you can go bigger, right? Like this is uh, the classic, I think this is called a Carlisle hook, right? This one here. Okay, so here we go, that's better. Classic Carlisle, oh, that's better. Carlisle hook, classic Carlisle hook. Uh, similar, it's about, you know, less than a centimeter from the, from the tip to the shaft, um, but but longer, right? This thing is almost two inches long. And the reason these are preferred for flounder is because it, it, it's less likely that the flounder is going to swallow this whole thing. I mean, ideally you hook the thing on the lip and, you know, there's no big issues. But sometimes maybe you're not paying attention, you're off, you know, taking a leak or something like that. <laughs> and uh, the fish swallows the hook a little bit. With something like this with a nice long piece on it, um, the fish is less likely to take it all the way down. You got something to grab onto and work it out of the fish, right? And I mean, just so you know, I'm talking about flounder. This is not a catch and release type deal, right? Most of the time people fish flounder for food. I'm sure people do it for catch and release, but I don't see why. Um, all right, so a hook like that. And for line, uh, I would use, I like to use 16 pound test. Um, you can use 20 pound test, you can use 12 pound test. Um, the weaker your line is, the, the more of a risk there is of, you know, it's gonna happen. You're gonna, unless you, where you're hooking is all sand, or unless where you're fishing is all sand, um, but often there's some rocks, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's uh, structure, right? There's, you might be fishing in an area with sand and mud and stuff like that, but there's going to be seaweed, there's going to be rocks, there's going to be kelp, there's going to be things like that. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to lose gear. I prefer to use a line that's weaker than the line on my reel. So on my reel, I usually have 30 pound test braid, which has the diameter of, you know, eight or 10 pound test, so it casts very well. And on my terminal tackle here for the flounder, I like to use 16 pound test because if it does get, let's say the weight gets jammed in a crevasse or something like that, or one of the hooks hooks onto something like an old rope or a piece of wood or something like that, um, <clears throat> I know that this is going to break uh, and I'm not going to break off my line at the spool of my reel and lose a whole bunch of line, right? So anyway, that's my mentality for that. All right, so that's, that's that. Uh, now, how do we tie this all up? Okay, let's get at it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use this as a, like a main line. Um, so you have the, your main line, 
and uh, you know you're going to tie uh, a barrel swivel onto that using um, and this is this is for beginners this is for people that really don't know anything about knots at all uh, have never you know learned about knots so the most basic knot maybe against this uh, wood this is more visible most basic knot is called uh, the clinch knot which is a knot where you you know you've got your your long piece and your short piece you wrap the short you know put it through the eyelet right you wrap the short piece around the long piece one, two, three, or four times, okay, like that. Then you put the short piece through the hole that's near your swivel, or whatever it is, whatever eyelet you're dealing with, right? And then you hold it with your fingers, let a little manual dexterity required here, right? And you just pull that, pull that tight against the swivel, right? Pull it tight. It's not tight right now, but once it gets close to tight, you lick it. Always lick your line before you tighten, especially with monofilament, um, and and you know get it nice and tight. Okay. If you find that the line, when you pull it tight, it slips out, put it through the eyelet of the barrel swivel twice before you make that clinch knot. Nine times out of ten, that'll solve it. Okay. So you've done that. Now you just um, trim that off leaving a little bit, just a little bit of what they call a tag end, okay? All right, so we got that. Now, you, now we know where the end of the line is, right? So now we're gonna make the little pieces that come off the main line, okay? So, and how long is this here? This here, for me, it goes from my chest all the way to the tip of my finger. So how long is that? Just so people wanna know, uh, every kind of question they could possibly ask. How long is this rig? And it doesn't, doesn't have to be this long. This is just what I like to use. Uh, this one here, I cut the string, was about, oh, let's say 38 inches long. Okay, so 40, you know, just so it's easy to remember, 40 inches long, right? Or whatever that is in centimeters, this, this uh, tape measure doesn't have centimeters. But for me, it was, I held the line against my chest and I just pull it out and wherever my fingertip is, that's where I cut it off. Uh, I tend to, you know, remember measurements against my body. Uh, all right. So now you're going to cut a piece of line about, you know, 12 inches, 30 centimeters long from your, your piece that's going to come off of the main line. Okay. And uh, all you do is you, you hold those two things, you know, you go, go down a little bit from the swivel. Okay. Hold those two pieces of line together. All right. Hold them together, so they're all, it's almost like they're one line. Okay. Make a circle with them. Okay, you're, you got, you, I got this here in my right hand. You're not going to let go with this hand. You're going to make a circle with it like that. Okay. And how easy that is to see. I'm going to make a circle. Okay. Now I'm just going to pass all the line that's on the left. Okay, on over over here. I'm going to pass it through the circle. I'll do this more than once. Pass it through the circle once, twice, and thrice. A little bit of manual dexterity required for this, and uh, maybe reading glasses depending on uh, <laughs> your age. Okay, so now I've passed both those strings through, right, and now I just tighten it up. Okay, once it's close to tightening, you lick it and tighten it real good. All right. Pull on it every which way you can think of to mend it up. Okay, so now I've got the main line and that string attached to it. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't know how, if it's easier to see this against the dark wood or against the light white. I'm not sure. So now I'm just going to trim off uh, the end there. That will not come loose, all right? So I got a line coming off like that, all right? So the hook, the hook is going to attach here, right? All right, I got a line coming off the main line, and the hook is going to attach to the end of that, right in the center of your screen there. That's where the hook's going to go, one of the hooks. Okay, let's do another one. 
All right, so same procedure. I've got the two pieces of string, right, beside each other, right? I'm holding one with my right hand at the long end over here near my left hand. I mean, I'm right-handed, so that's what makes sense to me. Uh, make a circle, hold all of that with your right hand. And then just start passing the two dangly pieces, right, through through the circle. Once, twice. For some reason the third one's always tricky for me, but there's, there's thrice, okay? Okay, so now I've got those both wrapped th through the circle three times, okay? Now you just pull it tight, holding all the strings with your hands, right? When it's almost tight, Give it a little lick, especially if you're using mono. Uh, if you don't lick it, no, nope, if you lick it, number one, it gets extra, extra tight. But also if you're using monofilament, with it, which this is not, um, it can heat up and actually weaken the, uh, the string at the knot, which you don't want it to be weakened at, right? Okay, so now I've got that tied onto there, right? And I'll cut the piece that's on the side of the swivel. You can cut either side, it really depends on you know what your plan is for fishing. There's arguments either way. You can cut it pretty darn close. I mean I've cut that pretty darn close to the knot as you can see, right? I got the rest of it hanging off. Okay, you see that? Okay. So now I've got a swivel. I got a piece of string coming. I got a, I got a swivel over here. Right? Swivel. Piece of string coming off the line, go down a little further, and another piece of string coming off the line, and I'm going to attach my snap swivel to the bottom here. Using that same knot, the, uh, the clinch knot, again, you know, put the line through the swivel, okay, hold it with your fingers. Pass the short piece around the long piece, one, two, three, or four, or five or six, really depends on how slippery the line is, right? And then put it through, back through the hole, not through the eyelet, back through the hole. Grab with your thumb and forefinger, that tag end, pull it tight, give it a lick, and then get it nice, super tight, okay? That's ready to go. Now all I gotta do is tie my my hooks onto the little pieces coming off. And uh, for that, again, you're gonna use the same, this one's a bit fluffy, so I just wanna clean that up a bit. For the hooks, you're gonna use that same knot, that clinch knot, all right? Three, two, one. through the hole, grab it and tighten, all right, like that, all right, that's all you got to do for those. Again, I wouldn't use string like this normally for a floundering, I'm just using it because it helps you see what I'm doing, at least I hope it does. Just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to show you that clinch knot again with some really heavy line against this white background, maybe that'll make it clear. You put the line through the eyelet of the hook, and a, and a huge, <laughs> big hook, right? It's a big hook. i got a big hand, that's a big hook. Put the line through the hook. Grab it like that. Wrap the short end around the long, uh, the long piece, or the main line, about three times. Right? Take the short piece, put it through the hole that you've made. Not the eyelet, just the hole in the line. <laughs> the hole you've created. And then hang on to that line while you, you know, pull this tight. Right? Just tighten and mend the line. And this is extra large line and everything's exaggerated here. But your knot will look something like that. Right? Clinch knot. And that's a knot that, and the reason you use this knot as opposed to a granny knot, you know, just tying overhand knot over and over and over again, 
Uh, every different kind of knot has a breaking strength. Some knots, um, when you tie a knot in line, I'll put it another way, but let's back up. Every kind of line has a breaking strength. I think this uh, bank line is a 200, 220 pound test, meaning I'd have to pull 120, 220 pounds to break it. When you tie a knot in the line, just because of the knot, um, ways knots work, the knot always, or most knots, weaken the line to some extent. Some weaken the line by 50%, reduce the breaking strength by 50%. Some reduce the breaking strength by 60%, 70%, and some reduce it almost not at all, right? It really depends on the knot. So of the quick, easy, fast knots to tie, and if, once you've tied a clinch knot a few times, I can tie one of these behind my back or with my eyes closed, right? Um, of, the, of, the, of the quick knots that are easy to tie, um, the clinch knot is probably the easiest one to tie with the um, least impact on the breaking strength of the line. It's not the best in terms of breaking strength, but it's in terms of easiness to tie and how it affects the breaking strength. It's, it's that happy medium, right? Uh, just right sort of thing, the Goldilocks principle. And so that's why we use the clinch knot for most of the time. Some kinds of line are so slippery and so thin that when you try to tighten up a clinch knot, it actually slips out. Uh, for those, uh, when you work, here, I'll try to show you with this line here if I can undo this. I haven't, haven't tightened it up that much. Sometimes you can untie a clinch knot if, it, if you haven't brought in a tuna on it. All right. So if you got really slippery line, one thing to do is to put it through the eyelet. This, this, this line's too fat for that. But you'd put it through the eyelet twice before making your clinch knot. That's a really, really simple trick. Another way to do it is what's called an improved clinch knot, where you do the regular clinch knot, right? You put your line through the hole, right, like that. And then you put it, put it basically, you put it through the, you take your line, you put it through the bottom hole, and now you've created a hole at the top, you put it through that hole as well. <laughs> that's called an improved clinch knot. It's basically like a clinch knot that's also a slip knot, right? It tightens as you go. These are great things to practice at, in the evening when you're sitting in front of the TV, contemplating, uh, you know, those leftovers in the fridge, <laughs> that bag of chips downstairs, you know. Uh, keep your hands busy, maybe you stay out of that stuff, I don't know. Uh, contemplating that microwave popcorn that smells and looks so good. Um, <laughs> That's a good time to practice your knots. Uh, anyway, that's an improved clinch knot, right? Just different strategies. Um, most of the time, if, if you're lucky, the, the regular simple clinch knot will work just fine. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's how you tie a uh, pattern oster rig for flounder, at least in my opinion. A couple little tips just before I go. Um, if you're fishing with kids, because kids lose gear a lot, they tend to get everything hooked on bottom all the time. Um, don't use a two hook rig for flounder, anything you're fishing where the, the weight is going to be on the bottom. Use a one hook rig, all right? Um, just assume they're going to lose their stuff. <laughs> so don't, there's no point baiting up two things and all that sort of stuff if they're just going to lose it, right? Um, that's good advice if you're fishing with kids. Also, uh, for storage, just put them in little, little snack bags like this. I got, you know, flounder rig written on this. <laughs> Right? I go fishing, I've always got three of these in my bag ready to go, right? Um, so if I lose a rig, all I've got to do is tie one of these on, snap a weight onto the bottom, and I'm back in the game instead of sitting there for, you know, 20 minutes trying to tie one of these up. These are relatively quick and easy to tie up if you're sitting, um, you know, sitting on a chair by a table with all your gear out, right? Um, it's a whole nother annoying uh, chore to have to tie one of these up on the shore with the wind and the flies and the rain and so on and no table <laughs> in your lap and all that sort of stuff, right? You can do it and I have done it. Um, but over time I've learned that bring about three of three spare rigs with you already tied up. Um, you probably will never need to, if you're, if you're flounder fishing and you have three of these, you probably won't ever need your tackle box, right? <laughs> really, if you had three of these in one pocket and three, three ounce or two ounce weights in your uh, left pocket, <laughs> probably have all the equipment you need for uh, flounder fishing, <laughs> right? Because, <laughs> um, yeah, if you're flounder fishing and you've, you know, you've got a rig on your rod and you've got three spares in your pocket, 
Uh, if you lose all of those, you might as well just go the hell home. <laughs> it's just not your day. <laughs> Things are not working right. Anyway, that's how you tie up a uh, Paternoster rig for flounder. Um, yeah, use anywhere from 12 to 16 to 20 pound test for the rig. Uh, try to match your rig so that to your, your main line so that it's slightly weaker line. So that if the rig gets stuck on bottom and you gotta pull and pull until something gives, you don't want the line breaking off at your reel and losing all the line on your reel spool. You want the line breaking down near the bottom. And swivels, barrel swivels, snap swivels, get the cheapest ones you can find. <laughs> Do not invest in quality for this sort of thing. You're gonna lose this stuff, right? Go to the dollar store if they have them there, buy them all, <laughs> right? And it doesn't matter how strong they are, right? All they gotta do is hold a few pounds. Uh, I tend to use a, a three ounce weight when I'm flounder fishing. Sometimes a two depends. If I got to cast at real distance, maybe I'll even go to four or five or six ounce weights. Uh, the cheapest swivels I've ever found at the dollar store have always held up to even six ounce weights. So uh, I wouldn't spend money on, on that sort of stuff. So. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching. <laughs>